Hello, welcome on this new YouTube channel devoted to model-based systems engineering. With several short videos, we wish to give you an idea of our future MBSC e-learning modules that we will provide regularly in the coming weeks. So stay tuned and please subscribe to PRFC channel. Thank you. In this first video in English, I made a small extract of the beginning of a one-day training about Arcadia. So we will quickly introduce the concepts underlying model-based systems engineering. Enjoy. So we will speak about systems and especially complex systems. On this slide, I try to represent all major domains where people are currently building complex systems, are practicing systems engineering, and are trying to use more and more model-based systems engineering. As I am located in Toulouse, we will speak first, of course, about airplanes and satellites with Airbus, Thales, Iron Group, Rolls-Royce, Safran, and so on. We must not forget cars, especially with the rising concept of autonomous vehicles. I already gave several MBSC trainings for Continental Automotive in Toulouse and Germany, for instance. There is also energy. In France, Framatome and Technicatom are using Capella on many projects in the nuclear industry. Railway domain is also using more and more MBSC. There is a big European project on autonomous train driven by French and SNCF and using Capella to secure a shared vision between the different partners. Last but not least, Healthcare domain, in particular for big systems like radiology systems, X-ray machines, MRI, and so on. Okay, all those people, all those companies in these domains are trying to build complex systems and are more and more interesting in adding models to the practice of systems engineering. What is a system? Well, there are a lot of different definitions, and I will stop on two of them which have the advantage to be both concise and precise. From the important ISO standard, for instance, a system is a combination of interacting elements organized to achieve one or more stated purposes. Take care, all the words are important. The other one comes from EIA 632, which is widely used in the aerospace domain. It emphasizes the difference between the system of interest that will be operated by the customer and the so-called enabling systems that will help building the system of interest. These enabling systems can in turn be quite complex, such as test benches, training systems, such as flight simulators, and so on. Enabling systems may be delivered to the customer or not, depending on their type, but they must not be forgotten as they need analysis and design efforts too. What is systems engineering? Here again, we can find a lot of interesting definitions. From the INCOSI, systems engineering is a transdisciplinary and integrative approach to enable the successful realization, use and retirement of engineered systems. By the way, we can elaborate a little more on the previous system definitions by saying that an engineered system is a system designed or adapted to interact with an anticipated operational environment to achieve one or more intended purposes while complying with applicable constraints. I will insist on the word interdisciplinary. Systems engineering means that a lot of different people with different skills and different backgrounds will have to communicate and work together. They come from mechanics, electronics, software, hardware, and so on. The second definition is more technical and detailed, with important words like iterative and requirements. The last definition I like a lot. It is more philosophical. It says that the whole is more than the sum of its parts, and that by combining parts that will be linked and will interact, the whole, the global system, will show new properties called emergent properties or emergent behavior. By the way, the notion of recursivity is quite important in systems engineering. We can say that a given system is nearly always a part of a higher level system and in turn a container for subsystems. And we could illustrate that from the atom to the solar system. What is the INCOSI? 
And why is it important for us? Well, INCUSI means International Council on Systems Engineering. It is a worldwide association of system engineers from all different domains who wish to share their experience and practices. They organize numerous events and conferences, as well as working groups, and publish state-of-the-art documents that really stand as good practices references. In particular, this document, called Systems Engineering Handbook, is really a kind of Bible for all systems engineers. It defines in detail processes and activities that are necessary to perform successful systems engineering. It is regularly updated, you can see it is already the fourth edition, to take into account state-of-the-art best practices and in particular model-based systems engineering. It is also the basis of the INCOSI certification program, which is becoming more and more a must-have for system engineers all around the world. And last but not least, Arcadia derives a lot from what is inside the SE handbook and is quite compliant with it. So, why do we model? The first goal is to reduce and master complexity. The more complex systems are, the more benefits you get from modeling. When I was a student in an engineering school in Toulouse many years ago, we had several practical work sessions in a wind tunnel with a wooden shape of plane. We had to study how air was flowing around the wooden shape to practice our aerodynamics theory and understand better a very complex domain. This was just a mock-up, a model, not of course a real plane that would fly one day. Okay, mastering complexity and reducing risks, that is the first and fundamental objective, but we also model to enhance communication. Because of the interdisciplinary aspect of systems engineering, more and more people coming from different backgrounds need to exchange information in a consistent way around the same complex system. And as a picture is worth a thousand words, we prefer diagrams to plain text. We will need a lot of different diagrams to analyze and design the same system with different abstraction levels and different viewpoints. For instance, before a new house exists, we need first high-level drawings to attract potential customers with a nice garden, as it will be only five years later, in fact. Then, if someone is interested, you need a more detailed map of how the rooms are positioned, their respective size, where are the doors, the windows, and so on. And later on, of course, when the house will be actually built, we need much more precise and specialized maps for the plumber, the mason, and the electrician. Different diagrams, different levels of details for different readers and different goals. Well, it will be the same when we model complex systems. We need analysis diagrams to discuss about the problem to solve with the customer and the end users. And we need design diagrams to discuss about the possible solutions with the technical team and each specialty expert. And don't forget that all these diagrams should be consistent and linked together. So unfortunately, we cannot use just plain drawings done with Visio or PowerPoint. To be more formal, we need a so-called modeling language. Languages have been existing for ages. For instance, of course, in mathematics, but also in the building industry, in the electronics world, and so on. What was really missing was a general purpose language independent from any specific domain or technical subject at global system level and not only for this or this kind of technical component. That is really the main idea that led to the definition of CSML in particular and also of the modeling language that we will find inside the Arcadia method. A modeling language, just like English or French, needs both a syntax and a semantics. The syntax defines the words and the grammar, so modeling constructs and rules to assemble these constructs. And if a concrete syntax defines also the shapes and colors of modeling constructs, it is even better to enhance communication. In order to manipulate efficiently these modeling constructs, 
we need software modeling tools, exactly the same way as we need word processors to write efficiently in English or French and to help us with spelling and grammar. You may already know, for instance, tools like Enterprise Architect, Cameo Systems Modeler, or Capella. So what these modeling tools bring compared to plain drawing tools is a knowledge of the vocabulary and the grammar of the modeling language. They will enable you to always create correct diagrams, proposing only the possible constructs and links, avoiding you to make syntax mistakes just by construction. And they often provide also powerful features to exploit the model contents, extract needed information, check model completeness, and so on. So let's try to sum up. Why do we do model-based systems engineering? Because we are convinced that for modern complex systems, for industrial projects that are bigger and bigger, a document-centric approach is no longer valid. This approach has led to a huge number of disconnected documents containing text and drawings, but unfortunately very difficult to maintain and mostly to ensure traceability. With the growing complexity of systems, this problem has become a real burden, a real nightmare for engineers, and has induced numerous project failures. That's why we want and we need to shift from document-centric to model-centric. It's the only way to be able to maintain the analysis and design documentation during the growing lifespan of modern systems whilst ensuring consistency. Without MBSE, a lot of standalone documents or even specialty models are exchanged by a growing number of people, but it is becoming more and more impossible to ensure consistency between all these artifacts. And unfortunately, this leads inevitably to incoherent decisions and references. In particular, the traceability between the different engineering levels, namely user requirements, then system requirements, and then architecture of the solution, well, the traceability between all these levels will be very hard to build and even more to maintain. So with model-based systems engineering, we want to share a common reference, by the way, of a shared system model with internal consistency being ensured by the use of both a modeling language and a modeling tool. Then we want to be able to extract from this common reference the useful information, the necessary information for each different stakeholder without getting overwhelmed by unnecessary data. If, on top of that, we can provide a collaborative workflow so that many different people can work efficiently together, it is even better, of course. And, cherry on the cake, the use of a common modeling language is a nice thing. It will help people speak with the same vocabulary and the same engineering concepts. In short, they will communicate better. For instance, if they all use Arcadia and Capella, they will have a chance to mean the same thing when they speak about functions, functional chains, logical components, and so on. Without MBSE, it is much less straightforward. And I remember long ago discussing with railway experts about functions like ensure passenger exchange, signal train arrival, but also with other experts about much stranger functions like the door function or the platform function, which in Arcadia would have been obviously components. I like a lot this way of presenting MBSE with the three pillars. First, a proper modeling language. Then, a software tool that really knows the language in terms of vocabulary and grammar, not just in terms of graphical shapes. Okay, the problem is that if we only have these two first pillars, for instance, of course, CISML, the systems modeling language, and Enterprise Architect or Magic Draw or Rhapsody as a modeling tool, we will soon come across the following issues. Where do I start? How should I organize my model to enforce distinction between problem analysis and solution description? Which of the nine CISML diagrams is the best one to start with? In which order should I use them? 
In short, you need also a modeling method. CSML is just a language, as the name tells, and not a method. CSML does not know and doesn't speak about analysis and design. CSML does not prescribe how to use itself. It is a quite nice toolbox with a big bunch of interesting concepts and diagrams, unfortunately, without user instructions. I've seen a lot of companies try to start using MBSC by just picking a language, and CSML, of course, is a sensible choice. Then, choosing a tool. Okay, we already have Rhapsody or Enterprise Architect for the software guys, so why not try to use it also at system level? Then, they start cheerfully the first project and soon realize that the model is empty after creation and they have no clue about how to start and how to proceed. At Thales, they did the exact opposite. They first asked themselves, what do our systems engineers need? Which concepts are important for them? Okay, we must enforce the distinction between the what and the how. So let us define a methodological approach inspired by the SEN book from Incozy, containing different engineering levels, such as system analysis, logical architecture, and physical architecture. And for each level, what are the main concepts that we want to use? Our system engineers are keen on using functional analysis. So let us describe the expected behavior of the system through functions and functional chains. Then these functions will be allocated to components, at first logical ones and in the end physical ones. So they defined in Arcadia several engineering levels with precise methodological guidelines. When they tried to implement it with CSML, the feedback from pilot projects was quite bad because they felt the language was not adequate. And in particular, they missed the very central concepts of function and functional chain. In the end, with Arcadia, they had both defined a method and a language. Of course, this language is quite similar to CSML, but with some simplifications and some additions, like, for instance, the functional analysis concept as prime order modeling constructs. Which leads to the big advantage of Capella. It is a modeling tool that knows not only a modeling language, like the commercial CSML tools, but also a modeling method, Arcadia. Capella knows the difference between logical and physical components, for instance. It knows that a logical function cannot be allocated to a physical component, and it prevents the modeler to do so. Capella knows the rules stating whether a functional chain is valid or not. Capella also provides several transition features to automatically initialize an Arcadia engineering level from an upper one, and it checks whether the different engineering levels have enough traceability links. In conclusion, all that is definitely a competitive advantage for Capella compared to CSML tools. Okay, so this is the end of the first video in English on YouTube from PRFC. We tried to quickly introduce the concepts underlying model-based systems engineering, and I hope you found it interesting enough. There will be soon a second one, giving an overview of the Arcadia method. So stay tuned and please subscribe to PRFC channel. Bye-bye.